Hello, this is uh, Valse des Chevaux de Bois, uh, which is uh, the Wooden Horses Waltz uh, by Dennis Show again. And uh, it's quite simple actually. Um, uh, three sections, which is really nice. Um, simple left hand, but uh, you can add some variety with that. That's one of the beauties of simplicity, is that it gives you scope to make things more interesting for yourself. Um, so let's start with the right hand. Uh, the first four bars are um, just two triads, A minor, and then D minor. Um, now, as the piece goes round and round, you can change those things. So instead of just having a straight A minor chord, you can walk down all of the notes and do the same thing on D. Let's say on D, I mean it starts on A, but it's on the D chord. Um, so that's the first obvious variation. Um, the next thing is you can do them slightly differently. So you could play walking down from the E. But then when you get to the next chord, instead of... You could reverse two of the notes. And that gives a nice crunch because it puts the accent on a non-chord note. So if I was to play that with the two chords slowly, uh, and it depends what you do in the left hand as well, we'll look at that later. Um, so that's the easiest way of uh, adding variety to those two chords. Um, you, you could do anything from round and round triplets. And that's much easier than it looks. Um, uh, or you could just stab them harder, or hold them on. So this is uh, stabbed harder. Uh, and this is holding them on. For me, I like um, having the first four bars quite energetic, and then you can smooth out the next section. So that's the first four bars over the chord of A, over the chord of A minor, sorry, and D minor. The next four bars start off from E. Um, and there's three bars of E underneath that. And then one of A minor. Then we get the first um, triads repeated. And by the way, that the, the leap between those two notes is an octave, so it's easy to find. Let's get your little finger ready. And this time it's two bars of E. And two bars of A minor. So again, there are lots of things you can, you can do um, with that rhythmically. You, um, uh, straight down. Um, so that's the first section that repeats uh, and obviously on the repeat you generally make things more decorative than you the first time. Uh, second section uh, again is two bars of A minor, two bars of D minor, three bars of E, one bar of A minor and then on the repeat uh, it's the same except it's two bars of E two bars of A minor. So it's the same left hand chord sequence, but the right hand's different. So it's already a decoration. And apart from one F natural in that, it is all A, C and E, the chord of A minor. There's the F. So that's quite nice. D minor. And that B is quite nice because it's not part of D minor. So over the chord of D minor. Another non chord note. And then we have the same music as the first section. Same as the first section now. So once more on the second section, A minor with an F. 
D minor, starting on F, and then down to B. Start on E. I get my middle finger, my third finger for the second F. So that allows everything to lie under the fingers. So whatever finger you arrive on on the F, it could be the fourth or fifth, I like to hop to make sure it's my third. That's the second section. Uh, the third section, again the chords are very straightforward. They're, we start on the D minor this, section, this time, go to A minor for two bars, E major for two bars, a minor uh, for two bars, D minor, A minor, E major for three bars, A minor. So it's exactly the same chords, not always in the same order. Um, and again, it starts off sketching out the arpeggio, or the broken chord. That's your D minor, and then we have that B note in. So that's quite easy. And you just drop down to the C, and you sketch out an E minor immediately. But this next bar is the same as the previous one. So it's really nice because that uh, that um, B F B A F. The first time we get it is over a chord of D minor. Second time we get it is over a chord of A minor, which is much crunchier. And then it's two E's. So it's just F's, E's and D's, that bit. And the reason I go up to an F uh, for the last one is so that I don't get two D's at the end. Otherwise I'd end up with... Which I think is uh, weak and might trip you up, otherwise. So, um, uh, let me play from the beginning of that third section. It's the same music. But it doesn't sound the same because between every note we put either a D in the first two bars or a C for the A minor bars. And that, um, so we start off with a long note, um, then instead of F, A, B, it's F, D in between. Down to the C. Section. So I'm playing the chords of E7 here without an E, so it's D, G sharp, and B, and then C and A. The, um, that E7 chord at, at the end, um, I like to add a C to it because it gives a real crunch and it's quite melodic as well. You can hear it just wants to resolve. It's quite a common trick that in classical composers to dominant seventh, but the melody is the sixth note, so obviously the sixth is clashing against the seventh. So that last um, couple of bars would be so that's the right hand um, uh, the left hand um, is a uh, huge amount of options uh, considering it's only three chords uh, we start off with a minor which is just the on papa on papa let me zoom in a bit for the a minor So 
I'm going to zoom in a bit for the, for the left hand. Uh, so find your E, uh, which is marked with a bump normally or, uh, or a dip, and there's your A button, uh, one nearest to the ground from there. Remember it's the second row back for the bass notes. These are the counter bass notes, which is the third of the chord, true bass notes here. And then the next column back is your major chords, we want minor, so it's going to be boom, pa, pa. And then if you just then play the next bass note up, that gives you um, what some people call the alternate bass or the dominance or the fifth. So you can, if you were doing that all day, it would be root, that's, that's the main note. It's still all the same chord. I know that's the E bank of, of notes and chords, but E is part of A minor two. So we just switch between the, the bass note and the fifth, which becomes a new bass note. Uh, so you can, uh, as this goes from A minor to D minor, you can go, and then the same thing on D minor. That's, that's what I'd advise. And then for, you've got three E's in a row. You can play E7s or E's. Now, because we've got a third one and we're going to A next, I suggest that you go down to the front row and that's where your third is. Because that, that G sharp leads really strongly to the A. So you could play E. just repeats the second, second half of that first section, we have only two E chords. So we have um, just the roots in the fifth like I showed you at the beginning. The other thing you can do is that if you're constantly going from E to A minor, instead of having start to have something that warps. So there's our E, we can have E to F sharp to G sharp to A. Instead of playing fours we have the that walking bass line. First bar of E is chord. Second section. Um, that's the second section of the tune. Um, instead of playing, which we could, you could just do that one pop up. Um, because the right hand is so much more interesting at this point, uh, you might just want to put some stabs in. So what I'm doing here is the, the bass note and the chord at the same time. And it gives it a lot of punch. And I'm putting it on the first piece of the bar. And that's a complete offbeat and it catches the top note in the right hand. So it's first beat, and then on the end of one and on three. So if I was to do that slowly. Out of that. So you could have two bars of, of uh, sort of dynamic um, 
uh, rhythmic uh, music, so where are we, A minor. And then go into the um pa pa after that. That uh, gives a nice contrast once more. And then smooth. And then go to the G sharp again. Um, that, so within that one little section, you've got three little things you can do on the bass line. You can play stab, stab, on pass, and then some on pass, and then a walking bass. So. second section. Um, third section uh, starts in D minor, so again locate your C, go up to for the D. Here we are. Uh, you can play the um pa-pas if you like. Um, or you can help hold some notes for change, so where's our C, there's the D. You can just play. And then snap out of it for the. And that's just um pa pa on E. Or, or, or E7. And then A minor. So from the beginning of that section, very slowly, here's some of the things you can do on the bass uh, D minor. Start with the slow, the slow held chords, or a combination of slow notes and stabs. And then back to D minor. You might want to leave that short so that you have room for the for the right hand. If you play the on pop bars, it gets in the way. Maybe not too much. Uh, maybe if you play some odd notes. And then back to smooth after that. So, um, it might be a bit confusing because I'm giving you more options. You can play on papa all the way through, or you can play some on papas and some uh, walking bass notes. Um, or even. So lots of options there and you can change the rhythm obviously too. Um, good luck, I hope that's some use.